So it's been about three years ever since I built the mascot of this channel, Ricky, the all-city nature boy. And it just occurred to me that I've never done a full review on him, despite how much I talk about him. So joining me today, who's also had some experience with the all-city nature boy, is Michael from Locked In. Hell yeah! So if you guys don't know me, I have my own YouTube channel called Locked In, formerly known as Mike's Bikes. Zach over here reached out to me because we both have excellent taste in bikes, and we both own a all-city nature boy. Different colors, different years. Mine's better. We'll find out. So without further ado, let's first talk about the specs of the All City Nature Boy. It's made out of All City 612 Select Steel, which is just a fancier name for double butted chromoly. It has 130 rear spacing and canty style brakes. Also, the entire frame set is ED coated. It means it <laughs> won't rust. And actually it does work. I've ridden in the rain a bunch of times and I live outside in the rain a bunch of times. Sorry, Ricky. And it has not yet to rust. Next, we're gonna get into ride quality. So if you guys don't already know, this is a cyclocross frame set, but in my opinion, it's got a little bit more comfortable geometry than a standard raced out cyclocross bike. You can fit real big tires on there, so if you got really crappy streets where you live, this is gonna be an ultra comfortable, still fast and capable, nimble cyclocross urban assault vehicle. And that's actually one of my favorite things about the All City Nature Boys, that you can do pretty much anything with it. You can go on the pavement, and you can still go off-roading with it. But I do mostly on-pavement roading, and for that, it is excellent. Compared to other bikes that I've ridden, the All City Nature Boy is pretty in the middle as far as stiffness and compliance goes. It's still springy and lively, but at the same time, when you sprint on it, it doesn't feel mushy. It has a nice balance between stiffness and liveliness. And I totally have to agree. I currently own a custom Philip Braze steel road frame, and this bike definitely has a different feel to it. TIG welded frame typically is a little bit stiffer, so it doesn't have that spring that my other bike does, but it does feel like it's a little stiffer in the bottom bracket in comparison, which does help a lot with being off-road since you are a single speed and you don't have any gears to help you out go up those hills. This is gonna basically give you more effective power transfer going up, going down or going sideways. And the steering for the All City Nature Boy, in my opinion, coming from track bikes and fixed gears, it feels pretty sluggish to me. It has a trail of 67 millimeters as opposed to most track bikes that have low 60s trail. The steering to me felt like I was steering a bus when I had drops on it. And it felt like it needed something a bit wider to liven up the front end. And I totally agree, and that's why I run straight bars on mine just because I felt the same thing with the steering response as far as initial turn in compared to some other more aggressive bikes that I've ridden. And because of that sluggish feeling steering, I'm just more conscious of it when I'm flicking it around a corner. I have to really lean into the bike and I can't just rely on the front end to carry me around the corner. And since it has cross geometry, it's just not as fluid as a track bike. Now we're gonna get into the pros, what we really like about the All Seder Nature Boy as joint owners. So first off, the big, big benefit to this compared to your standard track bikes, which maybe now Nowadays can clear a 28, maybe a 30. This bad boy, you can totally squeeze in a 42 without any tire rubbing. Rick is running 38 with fenders, so you have plenty of tire clearance for something that's gonna be really plush off-road or on. You can feel comfortable running something slightly bigger than what they actually recommend on their specs because we product tested that for you. And in our opinion, based on the rims that you're riding, you might be able to sneak a 45 in there. And as one of my close personal friends says, if you ain't rubbing, you ain't thugging. Honestly, one of the biggest pros for me about the Nature Boy, and one of the reasons why I bought it in the first place is just, look at it. Look how cool it is. I just couldn't resist the sparkly purple paint job, the hennepin bridge dropouts, the straight blade tapered fork legs. And it has great attention to detail, as Zach mentioned, as well as it's got your creature comforts. It's got dual water bottle bosses, which was something that I really wanted. You have internal cable routing for the rear brake, which really cleans up the frame set, as well as it keeps the cable out and away from any dirt and debris. And you can run this either V-brakes or canties. But if you are renting canties, you're gonna have to get some adapters that don't come with the frame set when you purchase it by itself. Now the Nature Boy is a great bike, but it's not perfect. There are some a few little things that I don't like about it. Firstly, they advertise that the canty studs are removable. That's half true, and the rear ones are removable, at least on my 2014 model. It does come with mounts for fenders, but there are no options to mount racks on it, so you have to find some other solutions. But probably my biggest complaint with the All City Nature Boy is that, as versatile as it is, that makes it a jack of all trades and a master of none, except probably cross. I've never used it for cross, but if you're gonna do it, Primo. And because I'm running it fixed, it does have a lower bottom bracket than a track bike, and I have had some pedal strike in the tighter corners. And because of that, I can't ride as aggressively as I would like, and I have to take corners wider. And for cons for me, I definitely agree with most of the things that Zach said. The other things I have to mention are a little bit different just based on our setups. So I run mine typically freewheel because Fixie Cross is something that sounds great in theory, but is terrifying in reality. 
So I don't have the pedal strike issue that he does, but I do run a slightly shorter crank at a 170. That's what I wanted to run on there to help with that bottom bracket height. Now on a cross bike, you typically want to run something that you would run on a standard road bike just for torque and leverage. So my seating position is a little bit compromised for that, but I've grown to like it. And it does give me that extra clearance when trying to go over taller objects. So I don't have the pedal strike issue cornering. I usually have it over obstacles. Also, as far as ride quality goes, steel is definitely real but this frame does not ride as plush as some of the other steel frames that I've ridden in the past. But overall, it is something that's versatile on the road and off, and if you were to ride this as a more streetable bike and you want it to roll a little better, you could put a smaller tire on there, but it would compromise the handling again because it's kind of designed to have a, I'd say plus 35 C tire on there at minimum. And that tire clearance is actually why I built the Nature Boy in the first place. Because when I moved to San Diego, there was just tons of great riding. But on top of that, San Diego is pretty spread out and I needed a distance machine that could get me from point A to point B comfortably and wide tires was the answer to that. But also with those wide tires, it opened up an entire new world of cycling for me that was dirt and gravel that I couldn't previously experience on a track bike. And that more relaxed geometry actually helped as much as I don't like to admit it. It was much more comfortable for those distance rides and it wasn't kinking my neck on a track bike. And that geometry also helped with a bigger load on my back, like with groceries. It might not be great for everything that I want to do and for my riding style, but it can handle everything okay or pretty well. And because of that, it's stuck around. I've been wanting to build another track bike, but I just can't find it in my heart to replace Ricky when I just don't need to. And I had very similar wishes on basically what I really needed in another bike. Big things that I was initially looking for was a little bit bigger tire clearance since the roads. My current job when I built this bike were a little rough. The bigger size tires just made it more comfortable. As well as I wanted something a little more utilitarian. Most track bikes don't come with water bottle bosses. That was a simple thing that I made a video on. I wanted something that was more versatile. I really started getting into cyclocross and so I wanted a bike that was great for commuting, that was simple, reliable, but be able to ride a little bit of dirt and not be totally scared. And lastly, we're gonna be talking about who should buy this bike? I think this bike is great for somebody who wants, again, a simplistic, easy commuter. It's gonna give them that easy, low maintenance, fixed gear style riding, as well as it opens up more versatility for where you wanna take it. The Nature Boy is great if you're looking for a hybrid bike, but you don't necessarily need all the gears that come with one, and you could benefit from the simplicity and the reliability of a single speed or fixed gear bike. On top of that, it's just a ton of fun to ride. The Nature Boy does everything I need to do, and I love riding it every day. And I get to ride all of these really great review bikes, but at the end of the day, I'm just always wanting to go back to the plushness of my nature boy to just rip around town. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you liked this. Let us know in the comments below if you guys want to see us discuss certain bikes, compare certain bikes, and kind of have us either go head to head or have a just open discussion and answer questions for you guys. I really hope that we can make cool content for you guys going forward and would appreciate your support. And again, check out Michael at Locked In in the description. He's actually one of the reasons why I got into fixed gear bikes in the first place. Without him, this channel wouldn't exist. If you subscribe to my channel, you're also gonna see the outtakes, blooper reel, whatever you wanna call it, because this has been way too long and just we can't get through anything without messing it up. And if you wanna watch that, you can on my channel. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to Mikey Sincox, Albert Wu, Marek Dravecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hound, Dorella01, Evil Ernie, Mark Van Deventer, and Jazeel for making these videos possible through their support on Patreon. Don't watch this upcoming video if you haven't ridden your bike yet today. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.